Welcome to Lighthouse Baptist Church. Let's all stand, grab our hymn books, turn to page number 257. 257. Saved, saved. Sing it with me. Verse number one. I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Sing it out with me, verse 2. He saves me from every sin and harm, secures my soul each day. I'm leaning strong on his mighty arm. I know he'll guide me all the way. Here we go. Saved by his power divine. Saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete. For I'm saved, saved, saved. Verse 3. When poor and needy and all alone. In love he said to me, Come unto me, and I'll lead you home to live with me eternally. Saved by his power divine, saved to new life sublime, Life now is sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, amen. I love that last part. Life is now sweet and my joy is complete for I'm saved, 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 amen. I hope you're living like you're saved and that your joy is complete. Let's open up in a word of prayer this evening. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, to be in your house. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God would illuminate the word of God to us this evening, Lord, as we continue our study in Revelations. And Father, we want to give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Has everybody had a good week so far? Amen. It's good to have Krenda with us tonight. I didn't know if she was going to make it or not, but she's here. And uh, so, but just keep her in prayer if you would. Uh, keep our country in prayer for sure, amen. As we study Revelations, it's uh, not too hard to see that uh, uh, it wouldn't take too much. Uh, this is all the precipice we're seeing that's going on right now, and it actually helps you understand. As we get further into Revelations, you'll find out that uh, America is not really one of the superpowers that comes down and uh, I'm telling you what, we're getting that all set up right now. And uh, so the Lord's coming back sooner than later, Amen. which is fine with me. Uh, old age doesn't agree with me. Amen. <laughs> I don't think old age agrees with anybody. Amen. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Does anybody have a praise real quick? I gave mine already. Brother Eldon. Amen. 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 It is. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. Amen. Exciting to look into the. It's exciting, but also tonight we're going to see some things that are revealed that are scary. I'm just glad that we're not going to be there. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony, Krenda?
Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? All right. Well, I got some good news. Uh, you know, last year we won an award for being best place of worship in 2020, and uh, we were nominated best place of worship for 2021 uh, here in Waxahachie for a small church, which is awesome. And uh, let me read just what they sent to us. They they said Lighthouse Baptist Church of Waxahachie, Czech, Texas, is among a very small group of uh, churches that have won the Best of Waxahachie Award for two consecutive years. This uh, distinction has qualified Lighthouse Baptist Church of Waxahachie, Texas for the 2021 Waxahachie, Waxahachie Business Hall of Fame. And uh, But anyway, so they're, they're, uh, we get a Hall of Fame award. Uh, that's pretty neat, neat. I really think that's interesting. It's also a good morale booster to know that, uh, you know what, who gave us that? I believe the Lord does all those things. And uh, we don't think we're doing anything. And we're going to sing a song here in a minute called Little Is Much When God Is In It. And uh, God does recognize that. And uh, you say, who nominated us, you? No, I had no really no idea. I just got the email. Uh, they sent me an immediate press release. I guess uh, 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 as of August 3rd, 2021, it'll be a, announced in the press release for Waxahachie uh, for Lighthouse Baptist Church as the, great, the best place, greatest, it's the greatest to me, <laughs> the best place of worship in, in Waxahachie for 2021, amen? And uh, there are a bunch of things they look at. Uh, they gather various sources of information. We're gathered to, an anal to analyze or choose the winners in each category, and, uh, but there's all kinds of things they look at like exceptional uh, success in your local community and business. Uh, so there obviously somebody has been saying something good. Amen. Amen. And uh, let me tell you what, I don't really care who's watching us. I know God is. Amen. And so sometimes don't you feel like you're really small and that what you're doing isn't that significant? But God looks down and he says, hey, you guys are doing a good job. And this is, uh, this is your recognition. And so, uh, actually, we went ahead and uh, we have purchased the awards, and they'll be sending them us. So I'm going to be talking to OJ about building us some kind of shelf. Maybe we can get it every year. And, uh, and that has all to do with you and uh, what we do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but uh, these next awards will actually say Best Place of Worship Hall of Fame. Uh, and so Lighthouse Baptist Church is uh, in the, in the uh, Awards Hall of Fame for having it twice. How, about, how awesome would that be to get it next year? Amen. And uh, you remember, this isn't something you get to go and, and uh, stick your name in. Uh, somebody else has to do that, and then they go and a anal analyze what, what you've done and how you've been in the community. So what a blessing, amen. And I think we deserve a round of applause, amen. Praise God. Uh, best place of worship of 2021. And uh, so we'll be getting that soon. Anyways, I went ahead and printed those off. Almost made me cry when I saw that. And you know what's interesting is God knows when we need some encouragement. Um, also, uh, Countryside Baptist Church had, I think, their anniversary. Is that what it was, Quinda? And uh, Dwayne Shipman, he goes to church there. He married uh, Brother Sutton's daughter. And uh, they have a company, and uh, they do, uh, I can't remember what they call that. Is That's not some kind of embossment or something like that. But anyways, uh, they had some extra cups, brand new cups, because uh, uh, you have to buy so many. And he called me and he says, well, Brother Worley, would you all be interested in getting Lighthouse Baptist Church on these cups? And I says, we sure would. Amen. And so we have right now, unless we want more, we have 18 cups that say Lighthouse Baptist Church on them. What I'd like to do with these, because they did cost us money, what I'd like to do with these is if everyone will buy one, uh, but let's do it as a, at a minimum of $10 each. And you say, why is that? Uh, because I'd like this to be an incentive to give towards our air conditioner that we do need. And uh, so it, every little bit does count, okay? And so if we do just 10, we have 180 or 100, or we have 18 cups, 100, I wish. Uh, we have 18 cups in there. But me and James were just talking about their right-handers cups. So while you're drinking at work, everyone can see Lighthouse Baptist Church and a, a good way to advertise and they may say, hey, I want one. I know my, my mom's going to want one. She wants anything to do with our church. i got to ship her a Bible when we get one. But aren't those nice? They got our logo. 
our address, our website. And so uh, if you're interested in one of those, uh, you see me after or see me on Sunday. And then what we'll have you do is you'll put your money in your tithe envelope. Make sure you mark it on there uh, so that we know that it goes in the building fund. And just say this is for the cup and that they'll know that's designated for that. And what we're doing is trying to raise $4,100, okay? How much do we have already in the building fund, do you know? In the building fund. Only have, but we have whatever we've been given in the change offering. Okay, so whatever we have, we have 200 plus whatever's in the change offering. So we got a ways to go, but that's all right. I remember when we needed chairs and we weren't running that many people and we needed $1,600 for chairs. And, uh, you know, we thought that that was an astronomical amount. And uh, how, how long that took was four weeks. In four weeks, we picked up more than $1,600. And what's interesting, we had a visitor come, if you don't remember. A visitor came, and uh, he went on to be with the Lord. But he came, and he gave $600 to our chairs uh, as a visitor. Uh, and you know what? God used him to help us get our chairs. So don't ever say, well, that's a lot of money. Yeah, Not to God, it's not. We just need to be faithful and be committed. Uh, and remember, everything we do for the Lord is the honor and glory of him. And he'll multiply and amplify it. Isn't that great? So anyway. This would be a nice little token as you give towards that. Uh, just let me know. We have 18. If we need to get more than that, I will. And at that point, maybe we'll order some uh, little fancier mugs. Now that I know what it looks like, I may change the font. But uh, you can, uh, she's the complaint department, my wife. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to leave that right there so you can all see it. Uh, but that's exciting. I appreciate uh, that. Everything for the Lord. Isn't that great? Uh, and by the way, we got another large box of John and Romans. So I believe we have about 4,000 John and Romans to hand out. So please grab those and hand them out. Everyone in Waxahachie or wherever you work should have the free John and Romans. You say, why are those two books important? Paul asked me that. And that's a good question because those are the two books you're going to use to lead someone to the Lord. And those are the two books you should start reading your Bible in John and then in Romans. If you'll read those, you'll find out God loved you. He gave his son for you. And then you find out in Romans that you need to accept Jesus Christ in your heart. Amen. Praise God for that. Donna, you got four of them. We got to give them out. Amen. Hand them out, leave them out. Actually, we went to Blue Bonnet when we first got them, me and James, and we took one for every one of their workers, and I gave it to the manager, so I know they all got them. Amen? So praise the Lord. Does anybody have anything else? I think that's it. Oh, in Haiti? Oh, yeah, I remember he came to our church. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard from him in a long time. So, well, anyways, let's all, uh, let's stand one more time, amen. We've got to sit for a minute here in a little bit. Let's turn in our hymn books if you want to. It's at page 415. Uh, this is probably one of our favorite songs, Little as Much, When God is in It. And if you'll pay attention to the words, you'll understand why this is important. And don't just think about our church. Think about you, amen. In the scope of everything that's going on, we're really not that big, amen. Uh, so sing this with me if you would. Here we go, verse number one. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest, calling you. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you go in G. Look at the words, verse 2. Does the place you're called to labor seem so small and little known? It is great if God is in it, and he'll not forget his own. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown, and you can win it if you go. Think about that recognition that Waxahachie has given us. As we're singing this, it's, it's amazing. I mean, uh, there I, I don't know anybody here that went down there and said, hey, can you put us on the list? But you know what's interesting? We'll focus and do what God's asked us to do. 
God will recognize us. I appreciate that. I, I love it when God recognizes us, don't you? Number three. Are you laid aside from service, body worn from toil or care? You can still be in the battle, in the sacred place of prayer. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Verse 4, when the conflict here is ended, and our race on earth is run. He will say, if we are faithful, welcome home, my child will done. Little is much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it, if you go in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful that if we just have to do our little, amen, God sure makes much out of it, doesn't he? I remember when we started, we sure were little, Lighthouse Baptist Church, and uh, God's done some awesome things, hasn't he? Done some magnificent things. Praise the Lord. Does everybody have their notes? Revelations chapter 6. All righty. Revelations chapter 6, and what's neat is we've already done the review. Go ahead and uh, open your Bibles to Revelations chapter 6. Open your notes. We're on Roman numeral 2. Oh, need notes? We're on Roman numeral 2. This is, uh, gets interesting. So what did, we, what did we look at last Wednesday? Does anybody remember? We looked at Daniel's 70th week, right? remember? We looked at all that. We got re-familiarized with all of that, remember? And uh, we're, we're on Roman numeral 2, uh, Daniel's 70th week, and the tribulation. So everybody there? We, we got pretty far... Uh, last week I wanted it because that was all basically review and so uh, but let's go ahead and let's see how far we can get tonight I'm hope, hoping to get uh, uh, quite a ways I'd like to get to Roman numeral number three but let's see but let's go ahead and get started uh, number two Daniel 70th week and the tribulation uh, are you there with your notes okay all right you got your pens ready most prophetic literature refers to the seven year span of Daniel 70th week as the what we know that, amen, tribulation, or what? The great tribulation. Strictly speaking, it is only the second half of the week. Remember, the tribulation is broken up into twos. First th three and a half and the last three and a half, amen. Uh, it's, look on with me. That is properly the great tribulation. All right, let's, we're going to be turning in our Bibles quite a bit tonight, so let's turn over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. I don't believe that this is review, so I think we need to look at this. Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 21. Matthew verse chapter 24, verse number 21. We're going to be reading quite a bit of scriptures throughout the Bible uh, tonight. So is everybody there? Look at what it says there in verse 21. For then shall be what? It says, be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, uh, may, notice what, what he says there. They'll, there's never been any tribulation, or will there ever be any greater tribulation than the great tribulation? That's pretty scary, isn't it? Uh, okay, so what we're getting ready to look at is... Uh, is, is more fearful uh, for those who aren't saved. They're going to go through this. And let me tell you something that's going to be scarier than some scary movie. A movie is fake. This is real. This is all going to happen. Uh, this is real life. Jeremiah chapter 30. Turn there with me. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30. We're going to look at that verse uh, we're going to actually, I believe yours says just verse 7, but go ahead and put a hyphen there. We're going to read verse 7 to verse 9. So Jeremiah 30, verse number 7, and we're going to read those three verses, 7, 8, and 9. 
Jeremiah, it's after Psalms, Jeremiah chapter 30. I think it's important for you to see these things as we go forward because we're talking about what's going to happen in the tri tribulation. This next point after this is what will this time be like? I'm just giving you time to get to Jeremiah. Is everyone there? Yeah. Jeremiah 30. Look down at verse number 7. It says, alas, for what? That day. Now, I don't know if you're big into highlighting or underlining, uh, but there it is. That day, amen, is great. That's the great tribulation. So that none is like it. It is even the time of what? Jacob's trouble, another name for the last three and a half years of the tribulation. But he shall be saved out of it. Speaking of who? The remnant, uh, Jacob or Israel. That would be those people. They will be saved out of it, not all of them, uh, for it shall come to pass, there it is, in that day, knowing that we're talking about the tribulation, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will, what, break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall, what, serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. This should excite you. Uh, the Jews are not looking unto Jesus who's the Savior. They're looking everywhere else and the Bible says clearly here that I will break them. Amen. Uh, they will look to me. Let me tell you something child of God. Uh, God will break you as well. Amen. Uh, he is the breaker. Notice uh, we looked in uh, uh, Daniel, when we study Daniel, he is the smiting stone, the one who comes down and wins in the tribulation at the battle of Armageddon. The major Bible passages dealing with this particular period are, and there's a list uh, so that you can go back and look at those. Those are for you. Let's go on to A. What will this time be like? I like this part. Uh, not because I think that they deserve it. I deserve it. Okay, uh, this, this should get you on fire to tell people about Jesus Christ. Does anybody here want someone, to, I, I mean, we can, we can be very angry and hateful and say, I just wish you would die. We don't mean that. If you do, you've got a problem. Okay, uh, you're not saved then, okay. Either that or you need to get right. Okay, uh, so there's not one, I don't want to see someone burn in hell. They choose that themselves, all right? I don't want anybody, we should live our life that way. And maybe this will help us to be a little bit uh, more clear on what the Lord wants. Notice here in A, uh, these passages do not present a pleasant picture. I highlighted this. This is, uh, this is real. Number one. A time of unprecedented trouble. What does unprecedented mean? Does anybody know? Good, good job. No example to compare. Unprecedented means there's no way that we can compare. So when we start looking at this, don't start thinking in your head about a scary movie because that does not compare. Amen. Someone asked me about the Passion of the Christ movie. Let me tell you something. That was also an unprecedented account. And there ain't no movie that can compare to what Jesus did for you and I, just so you know. Because he was all God and there ain't no man here that could take on the pain that Jesus did. He not only took on more lashes, he he not only uh, bore the weight of the world, but he stayed on the cross and he kept himself alive. He let his body die. He went down to hell and dropped your sins off. And he rose himself up on the third day. There ain't nothing precedented by that. There's no Hollywood movie star. There's not one thing that we can compare that to. I'm so sorry about Hollywood and what it's done to Christianity. has made it a thing that we think, oh, well, that's not so bad. Well, you know what? If we were there we'd have probably had panic attacks because of what how brutal it actually was and let me tell you something you think that that was brutal when the wrath of God comes down on this earth after the rapture it's going to be an unprecedented time of trouble the word trouble as we see it in the word of God it means adversity or affliction it's hard not to get excited
excited when we're talking about this. We're going to be in heaven and all kinds of unprecedented trouble and adversity and affliction and anguish. And, and guess what? They're going to be to a point of confusion. But remember, who is the confusion? God. It's not Jesus Christ. He came with a clear presentation of the gospel. Satan is going to be uh, down here confusing everybody, making them think that he's Jesus. Turn with me, if you would, to Daniel chapter 12. You say, that's good preaching. Now we're trying to teach. Daniel chapter 12, hard not, to, hard not to get excited when you talk about Jesus. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 1. It's really hard to skip these verses. Daniel chapter 12 and verse number 1. You should have known we're going to go there. We're going to hit uh, Matthew 24, 21, Mark 13, 19, and Revelation 6 and verse 17. I think it's very important for us to see this. If you really want to get an understanding of what this time is going to be like, we really got to see what God says. Don't take it for me. Look at verse number 1 of Daniel chapter 12, and it says, At what? And at what? That time, you know what he's talking about. Shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. That's the Jews. And there shall be a time of what? There it is, of trouble. Such as what? That was since, never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be what? delivered notice isn't that interesting there's going to be an unprecedented amount of trouble but there's also going to be an unprecedented deliverance everyone that shall be found written in the book amen isn't that great uh, turn with me if you would uh, to Matthew back over to Matthew 24 I know that we're going to hit Matthew 24 a few different times, uh, but there are certain verses that we're going to read. We don't want to read them all at the same time. It depends on what we're talking about, what we're pulling out of that verse. But Matthew 24, look at verse 21. Remember, we've read this, but for then shall be a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. That's an important verse for us to read, and I hope that you'll remember that, because we have never seen any kind of trouble like this. It doesn't matter whether it's the, uh, what was it called, the atom bomb. It doesn't really make a difference what kind of trouble that we can look back and think on. Uh, nothing's going to be precedented like what's going to happen uh, during the tribulation. Mark chapter 13 you know that's like uh, people say that they don't want Jesus Christ as their savior because they're going to go to hell and party let me tell you something it's not it's not going to be a party in hell the Bible says it's where the worm dieth not that sounds nasty to me it says where you never stop falling you never can see because it's so dark and you're not going to be able to communicate to anybody so what kind of party is that that's not sound like a party it says that you're going to hear the gnashing of teeth and the screaming but no communicating and you'll never die, but always burn forever and ever and ever. Can you imagine that? Not a party. And there's not going to be a party during the tribulation. It's going to be a time of unprecedented trouble. Mark chapter 13 and verse number 19. I just want you to understand it's not going to be a fun time through the tribulation. Let me tell you, if it's unprecedented trouble, then how are we going through it now? We're not. For in those days shall be, notice the wording, in those days shall be affliction such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time neither shall be. You know what he's saying there? He's saying that there's not been anything like this until up until that point which is in the future for us and never will be again. We have nothing to compare it to. Revelations chapter 6. Revelations chapter 6 and verse 17. I don't know what we need something to compare it to. We got God's word. You know, why don't you just believe the God, okay? Do you know what? That's what you've got to do to get saved. You've got to believe God's word. You've got to believe. You need to believe. I think there's a lot of lack of belief today. There is. I mean, there's a lot of people afraid of some silly things. 
Come on now, there's a lot of things that are going on that we can't control, but God has control as long as we'll focus on Him. He'll get us through, friend. Mark, uh, Revelation chapter 6 and verse number 17. For the great day of His wrath is what? Is come. Notice what He says next. And who shall be able to stand? Good question. No one. Not without Him. Not without Him, praise God. This is a staggering especially considering the devastation of the wars of the 20th and the early 21st centuries alone. They can't compare uh, anything that you want to think of. It can't compare the Jews being annihilated. Can't compare with the Nazis. It can't compare. Unprecedented. God's going to be involved. Number two. So not only is it a time of unprecedented trouble, it's a time of persecution of the saints. You say, wait a minute, I thought we were all being raptured home. Yes, uh, the church that's saved right now will be raptured home. But there will be those who get saved during the tribulation. And uh, praise God, there's going to be some saved saints. But what an awful time to be saved. Now, I know that uh, people are talking about those ones in Afghanistan and how that they're going to have to die for their faith. Let me tell you something, that is not something new. You should be willing to die for your faith. It's a shame when we can't even read our Bible, yet we say we'll die for our faith. It's a shame when we can't go to church, yet we say we'll die for our faith. Let me tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, if you can't go to church, that's, a, that's not a hard step of faith. How, how much more do you think that you'd be able to die for your faith? Hmm. I tell you what, we're big talkers and salesmen. The second thing we're looking at is the persecution of the saints. Daniel chapter number 7, turn there with me. I know it's hard and it's hard saying who can hear it. They said that during Jesus' time. Now these were his disciples. They turned and looked at Jesus and he said it's a hard saying who could hear it. And I think it was 120 disciples that were following Jesus left. Do you know what Jesus did? He turned and looked at the 12 and said will you also go away? Jesus was the greatest preacher of all time, was he not? Yet he had 12, and one was a devil. Daniel chapter 7, look down at verse number 21. This is serious, amen. Daniel 7, verse number 21, he says, And I beheld the same horn had made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Now look down at verse number 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. We're talking about the Antichrist. And shall wear out the saints. Amen. Now we talked about this when we studied Daniel. He's going to tear us up, buddy. It's going to be fun time. You think the Taliban is scary? You see what's going on? You see us leaving those people there and they're falling off of the wheels and everything like that? You think that's a joke? That's serious? Let me, let me see you fall off of an airplane. Let me see you grab one and think you can hold on. You know, they, if they would have been able to hold on, they would have froze to death to them wheels, just so you know, amen? Let me tell you something. They were afraid, but there ain't going to be nothing more scary than the Antichrist when he gets his way with the saints. Now, I'm just trying to help you. This is going to be a hard time. Now, little Desir, it says that he's going to have his way in verse number 25. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until the time of times and the divining of time. Hey, he's going to be able to do what he wants for just about a time. And then when God has had enough, a smiting stone's going to come down and we're going to follow him. That's the second coming of Christ. Boy, I can't wait for that. Amen. Uh, it's not really good talking about the wrath of God uh, but when God comes home amen and payday comes home and we get to come home with him and he puts evil while evil goes and hey we get to reign with him boy that'll be a good day there's going to be persecution friend like there's never been persecution before I know there's a lot of people that are saying to pray for those in Afghanistan. I don't have a problem with that. But let me tell you something. We cannot uh, compare apples to apples because this is going to be unprecedented time. It's going to be more wicked and more corrupt, uh, even worse than what's going on over there right now. Amen. Matthew 24. 
again, I told you, Matthew chapter 24. Look down at verse number 22. Matthew 24 and verse 22, are you there? Yes, sir. And the Bible says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for what? The elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Amen. You know who the elect is, don't you? It's talking about the Jews there. Turn with me to Revelations chapter 12. Revelations chapter number 12. Let me ask you this. What's the tribulation for? It's for the Jews. Revelations chapter number 12. This is good. I love this. We're going to look down at verse number 13. And we're going to read to verse 17. Look there with me. Are you there? And notice here, it says, And when the dragon saw, and we know who the dragon is, okay, and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth, that's Satan himself, if you don't know. God's given Satan different names, and dragon is one of them. Remember, Satan is the god and the prince and power of the air right now. He can go and roam in the air. Did you know that? We already talked about that. But there here in this part of the scripture here in Revelations, God casts him to the earth. And so he's no longer to go to and fro in the air. He's got to mobilize like we do. Amen. God says that's it, buddy. <clears throat> it's not because he has wings, just so you know that too. Uh, we got a misconception of what Satan looks like too, don't we? He's called a dragon not because he looks like a dragon, but because he acts like one. Are you with me? Praise God. God sees things for what they really are, just like he knows your heart as well. You know what? He is looking at your heart, and he knows it's wicked, and he wouldn't refer to that as humanity. He'd refer that to as a beast, just like he did in Daniel, and he sees us acting like animals. And when he looks down at what he used to call Lucifer, uh, the dragon, and saw that he was cast on the earth, he persecuted uh, the woman, that would be Israel. That's the Jews. Who do you think he wants to persecute? And uh, which brought forth the man child. And to the woman uh, were given two wings of, great, of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. This is God giving her swiftness to leave. Not because now I'm trying to help you. This isn't saying that all of a sudden the Jews turn into an eagle and fly off. You, you need to focus, okay? Uh, because there were promised that if when this happened, that God, if they would follow God, God would save them. Remember, they're going to go to Petra. Anybody go look, go Google Petra. They're going to go to the rock and they're going to go hide. Why do you think we got the word of God in Petra? Because the remnant of the Jews that are going to be saved by God will be able to read God's word and receive Jesus Christ. And they'll, they'll willingly receive him because of the fact that the dragon is Satan. Trying to kill them. Amen. Notice it says they fly into the wilderness. That's just talking of swiftness to get out of there. Kind of like what the Afghanis are trying to do. They're trying to get the heck out of there. But they can't because God isn't enabling that. God is going to enable for those chosen Israel to get out of there. And notice here he says and into her place and where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time and from the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that might cause her to be carried away of the flood and the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Now remember John is seeing this and he's trying to tell you about this. Now, I'm not going to jump into 12 and explain all of it to you, but I want you to understand what's going on. Remember, whenever we talk about a flood and its destruction, is that not what uh, the dragon wants to do? He wants to destroy all of God's people, and he thinks he's still in the end times during the tribulation, still thinks he can win. Been cast down from the air, and now he thinks he's going to destroy Israel, the woman, with a flood. And the Bible says that God opened up the earth and swallowed their destruction. So all the destruction that's coming at Israel uh, is going to be swallowed up by the earth. And it's gonna, they're, they're not going to be able to hurt them. Why? Because God's in control. And look down with me in verse number uh, 17. And the dragon was wroth. Of course he was. Satan. 
You know what's funny? He can read this Bible. Doesn't mean he doesn't. Doesn't mean he thinks he's going to lose. He thinks he's got a chance. He's lying to himself, just like we do. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant. And the remnant is the the few Israelite. The Bible will tell you that there'll be 144,000 Jews out of all the Jews. That's it. Who will believe in Jesus Christ during the tribulation. Not the Gentiles. That's just the Israel. Isn't that neat that God gave us a number? And look at it. It says the remnant of her seed which keepeth the commandments. Now notice he's letting you know who, who would be the remnant. Well, the only ones that God is going to save are those who keep the commandments of God and have testified or have the testimony of Jesus Christ. You know what that tells me right there? That if they will get saved, God will save them. Boy, we could learn something right there, couldn't we? You know, I don't know what we're going through, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't get right with God, God God's not going to save you. You say, well, I'm saved, Pastor. I've asked Jesus in my heart, but you're not living like it. We want to live the way we want to live and expect God to come in and save us. That's a shame, isn't it? Look at down at chapter 13, verse number 1. And it says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw the beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now, I'm not going to get all into this because he's actually, all he's doing here is saying what we've already read in Daniel uh, about the nations there. And actually, remember the leopard, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I believe the uh, leopard was, was it Greek? Yeah, I think it was the nation of Greeks. Okay, so, and actually, remember in Daniel, if you'll go read, when God looked down at these nations, just like when he's looking at Satan here and he calls him a dragon, when he looked down at the nations and was telling Daniel about the nations in the future, he looked at them and he saw them as animals because of the way they acted. So you're like, man, a nation is a leopard? No, you know what's funny is we're looking at God's eyes right here, and when God looks down at humanity, uh, he doesn't really see the people that he created. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Oh, okay, I don't really think that's going on. You're really treating your neighbor like you would treat yourself? I don't think so. I mean, come on. We'd like to pamper ourselves. Huh? What do you feel like eating, honey? I, I, no, I don't want tacos. I would rather have hamburgers, right? We can treat ourselves, can't we? Notice here, if you look on with me, and it says, uh, and, and beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were the, uh, as the feet of a bear. And notice, all these animals are from the nations from Daniel. And the feet of the bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, which was what? Babylon. And the dragon gave him his power. Now you understand why Larkin drew a picture of that animal which we see right here with a picture of, uh, of the dragon or Lucifer, the Antichrist, sitting on top of those nations. Now all of a sudden that picture makes a lot more sense, don't it? Now notice it says, And the dragon gave his power and his seat and his great authority, and I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Now remember, the dragon is Satan, and the Antichrist is uh, not Satan. He's being controlled by Satan, okay? Just so you know that. Now, a lot of people thought that this was, uh, wasn't it the, the president that died? Yeah, okay. That, that's silly because the church has been here all that time, amen? Uh, but anyways, let's go on. With a deadly wound and was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Well, you know what's funny is Satan brought him back to life or kept him alive. You know, we've been told all this time that he's going to do that during the tribulation. You know, I don't know why you wonder and why people get all, ooh, man, no, Satan's, yeah, he's got a lot of power, a lot more than we do. Do you know, he was able to make the staffs turned into snakes. He is able to make a false sense of power that can make us think it's Jesus. He's, he's, he's already got a plan. God's already showed us that he's going to do that. Yeah, he's a good magician. Yeah, you know what, and, and my wife hates magicians, even though it's just a sleight of hand. She also thinks that that's uh, one step closer to demonism, because that's exactly what Satan likes to use as a sleight of hand. 
And they worshipped the dragon, that's Satan, and gave power unto the beast, which is the Antichrist. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And the power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Well, yeah, he'll get to do that for a time. I know a lot of people doing that today. Let me help you with something. The Bible says there's some things we should not do. And when we do them, that's against God. We shouldn't be using the Lord's name in vain. Anything that, per, that has anything to do with him, I'm telling you what, we better put the Ten Commandments back up. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. I'm telling you, I, still, I hear that today. Uh, this isn't even talking about today, but I hear it today. You can't tell me that we're not getting set up for this time. They're going to receive this and accept it. And it was given unto him to make war with the what? With the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, those will worship him. But not those who love the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll take a bullet. They'll take a knife. They'll take fire. They will not blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to be a time of persecution for the saints. Here we go, the elect. Here we already know that. I already told you that. The elect refers to the Jews specifically. Number three, what will this time be like? A time of unprecedented trouble. A time of persecution of the saints. Yeah, I, you know what's funny? A lot of people say, well, at least they'll be able to be saved. That's not, the Bible says so it's going to be a bad time. It's going to be an awful time to have a child. Woe to the woman, yeah. That's going to be an awful time to live. It don't matter where you are, there won't be an America. There won't be no freedom. Well, you better live it up now because there won't be any of this. Number three, a time of world scale conflicts. A time of world scale conflicts. We, we like to talk about how we think we know about conflicts. Remember, this is an unprecedented time. World-scale conflicts. Joel is tricky. That's why I went ahead and started looking before you. It's after Daniel. <laughs> it's after Daniel, Hosea, Joel. I'm helping you. If we all had the same Bibles, which we'll eventually be able to, because they should be here, hopefully, in a month. And uh, we can say, well, it's page number 849, amen. <laughs> but Joel chapter 2, look there with me, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 12. I know he says 4 and 5, but to be able to get the conflict, the context, context is everything. I mean, uh, if you're going to Bible college, you, you're already knowingly supposed to read that whole chapter. But let's read verse number 1. Are we there? And the word of the Lord came unto uh, Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear. Hold on, I'm not on the right chapter. Chapter 2, I guess I can read all the chapters, right? Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds. Are you listening? A day of clouds and of thick darkness. You ever seen it when it's foggy? Now multiply a really, really dense fog with darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath not ever been the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations, a fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. And the land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Sounds like a kind of a massive war, doesn't it? It's talking about how it's great in front of them, and everything that they go across is destroyed. That's what locusts do to your uh, gardens and stuff, isn't it? The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen. So shall they run. 
Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array before their face and the people shall be much pained and all faces uh, shall gather uh, blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. Remember what we're talking about, conflict. During that time, number verse eight, neither shall one thirst uh, thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall what? Not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up on, up upon the houses. They shall in, enter in the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Can you imagine? And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that ex uh, executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Notice the question. And who can abide and therefore also now saith the Lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning it's going to be an awful time of war Revelations chapter 6 turn there with me Revelation 6 and verse number 4 And there went out a, another horse that was red, and the power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. It's going to be a time of world-scale conflicts. Number four. It's going to be a time of frightening darkness. How many likes darkness? There's not very many people that actually like darkness, and in all reality, uh, I know that guys think they're tough, uh, but in all reality, darkness uh, is, a, is a bad thing, and uh, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They want to go out and drink and do bad things, uh, but in all reality, when you're sick or when you're hurting and it's dark and you're alone, that's not really a good place to be. I'm going to tell you what, if God would allow, uh, we could take someone and uh, the, the one person who says, I'm not afraid of the darkness, and let's take them to the Civil War time where there's all that death and all that stuff that's going on, set him in there during a dark time, surrounded by that kind of uh, uh, stuff that's going on, like what's going to go on here, and then you add darkness and fog and all the stuff that's going on, there's going to be a great fear. Our bodies desire light. It's going to be a frightening darkness, not just a darkness. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Did you already turn there and beat me? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Actually, I had my ribbon there. I didn't even know that. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Are we there? Look at verse 4. We're going to look at verse 4 and 5. Uh, they only have 4, so if you want to write 5 on there. First Thessalonians chapter 4 or chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. It says, But ye, brethren, are not what? You're not in darkness. They, that, that they should overtake you as a thief. Ye are children of what? Light. And the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Well, that's a, actually, if you think about that, what a good promise for the child of God. That in itself right there tells you that we're not going through the tribulation. We don't have to go through a frightening darkness. I wrote right next to that another promise that we will not be here for the tribulation. How many does he have to give us? You know, it's funny. He gave us a promise that we could be saved if we received him and repented. And yet we can't believe if he'll save us from the tribulation. Does that make sense? 
Number five, we're going to uh, finish up on number five. We'll have to pick up number six next Wednesday. Number five, a time of terrestrial and celestial disturbance. Now, before we uh, look at the verses there, I want you to understand what the difference is here. Because, the, again, Hollywood has got our minds all messed up. And, uh, you know, we think of uh, aliens and that not. Uh, but what's terrestrial? Does anybody know? Well, that's pertaining to the earth. Good job, Virgin. What's celestial? Pertaining to the heavens. Okay? So celestial would be pertaining to the heavens. So that'd be like the stars and the clouds and that stuff in the heavens, okay? And so terrestrial would be pertaining to the earth. Now, you know, if you go look up those words, it'll tell you that in the dictionary. Terrestrial is not E.T., Celestial has nothing to do with aliens. Okay, yeah, fake, right? Uh, here's a here's a here's a word for it: uh, Satan and his fallen angels, and anything that he can get you to stop reading your Bible. If you'll go study on, uh, go start searching for Bigfoot. And it's funny thing is, uh, I've never seen any animal that's never died. Uh, but it's funny, we've never found a Bigfoot, never seen a real Bigfoot. All we get is little black blobs. Well, let me tell you what that is. I'll help you. Can I help you? So you stop looking for it. Stop watching those shows about it. There is no Bigfoot. There's Satan. There's demons. There's angels. And they, you know what they want to do? They want to cause you to go searching for things that has nothing to do with anything. Let me ask you this. If the Lord calls you home and you're out there uh, trying to find Bigfoot, uh, what about your family members that don't know Jesus Christ? as our Lord and Savior. How about if you go stand before the Lord Jesus Christ right now and you've been looking for Bigfoot, uh, are you going to be standing with your head up? No, I don't think so. You're going to be looking down, amen? Why? You wasted all your time. I'll help you. There's no Bigfoot. Amen. You know what's funny? I've always wondered this too. I would like to really love to talk to those people who think that we evolved from apes. Because if we evolved from apes, why aren't apes still evolving? Man, I, I guess I should. I told my wife I should be the president because of the fact that I, I know some of the, the things that they've decided. I would have never decided that ever. And that was just pure stupidity. You know what we need? We need to get back to the Bible and the Word of God and start following God and stop. It's ridiculous. If God's church would get right with God, God would take care of that guy. You say, man, I want to I wanna see our country. Go. Well, then you get right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not afraid of hell anymore. There's so many things about hell now they think they're going to have fun. You know, I, I heard this the other day talking to somebody about, uh, I heard them talking about hell, and they're talking about how they can't wait to go because they're going to have a kegger. Really? Okay. Do you know what's funny? Sit down with them and show the Bible. Oh, no, they don't want to do that. I don't waste my time. I says, you know what? When you get cancer or something and you get sick, let me tell you right now, guess who you're going to be calling? It's funny, we've witnessed the people that's been six, seven years ago, and guess where they're coming? They're having trouble. Guess who they're calling? Why aren't they calling their preacher? Why aren't they calling those other people? Guess who they're calling? Hey, Brother Worley, you got a second? What's going on? I already know what's going on. Something tragic is going on. Why do they want to come see me? Because they want to know what the Bible says. Well, why isn't everybody else studying their Bible? It's funny, you know, I, was, uh, I remember visiting, and... Uh, uh, they, they, you know, it's funny. They want to hear the truth, but then they don't want to hear what they have to do. They have excuse. It sounds like us. We've got an excuse. So I know that, that we springboard that off of terrestrial and celestial. But there's going to be terrestrial. That means there's going to be things pertaining to the earth and things pertaining to the heaven. And there's going to be disturbances in both. Okay. So turn uh, back over to Joel. That little book that hides. Joel chapter 2 and verse 10. 
And we read this verse, but listen to it again. The Bible says, The earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble. That's terrestrial and celestial. There's going to be some great disturbance. So it's going to be a, 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 a quake, on an earthquake, and the heavens are also going to tremble. That's kind of scary, isn't it? And the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Now, we, I've never not seen stars shine. Now, I've seen them get a little bit uh, dim because we're in the city in the smog, uh, but I've never not seen the stars not shine. Now, it'll be cloudy out and not see them, and we'll know it's cloudy, but that's not what it's going to be. Now, look at verse number 31, Joel chapter 2, verse 31. And the Bible says the sun shall be turned what? Now, I don't know about you, but do you know anything about the sun? I wish I had brought that up, brought that paper up here. I did not know the sun was that big. It is ginormous. You can't even get close to the sun. You will just burn. The sun... Is the only thing that keeps us alive. Did you know that? Actually, it's God, the sun. The S-O-1 keeps the S-U-N. It's a big old gas ball. And it's ginormous. Let me ask you this. The God has done one other miraculous thing. Is he held the earth and the sun in place. Now, how in the world, you know that the earth is spinning like this, right? And that's how we, that somehow that's how we, and you know, if you think about it, we're standing here and we're spinning like this, and none of us are doing any of this, you know, it's normal, it's gravity. I know that doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, but just think about this, God stopped it one time during the battle. He stopped it. You say, well, why didn't we all come crash into a halt? Stop, stop. <laughs> Wait, God, I'm falling, right? I mean, don't you ever think about those things? Because it's God. He can do whatever he wants. Now, think about this. That, that star, which the sun is, is going to be black. That's going to be scary. No sun. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon, I don't know how you make, a fire dark. Maybe God quenches it. But he can't quench it because that will kill life. But God can create light and he can make light go out and he can allow it to be hot still. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into what? That's scary. I don't know about you looking up there and uh, seeing a blood moon and no sun. And fire, oh, hold on, I'm on the wrong verse. And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. All that happens before the Lord comes back uh, when we follow him. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that interesting? Turn to Revelations, we got to hurry. Revelations chapter 6. I want to finish these few verses here, and then we'll close in a word of prayer. Uh, I, I don't feel it right. I've got them highlighted for a reason. Revelations chapter 6. Uh, I literally read every one of these verses and mark through them. Uh, so I know that these are important for us to get this. I don't really want to not read them. But Revelation 6, look down at verse number 12, and we'll read to verse 14. The Bible says, And I beheld, and when uh, he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. There it is. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Notice Joel was prophecy, and here we see it again in Revelation. And a sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as what? Uh, blood, here it is again. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her uh, unti uh, untimely figs. And when she is taken of a mighty, excuse me, wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains... Let me see here. Uh, and the mighty men and the every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Isn't that hilarious? All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, chapter 11, verse 13. They think they're mighty, don't they? Not too. That, that's pretty much what happens to bullies, isn't it? Uh, until they, when they find out that they're really not so tough. 
uh, you know what, when they realize that they're really on the wrong side and they're not going to choose the right one, they're going to run and hide like they can hide from God. Uh, Revelations chapter 11, verse 13. And the same hour there uh, was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake uh, were slain of men, listen, 7,000, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God of the heaven. Think about this really quick. Notice who gave glory. Uh, it wasn't the ones uh, dying and afraid. It says the remnant. Now when it says the remnant or the elect, it's talking about the Jews that have turned their face back to an almighty God and they understand and they realize, wait a minute, we're in the tribulation and we better get right. And they see 7,000 men and they're like, praise God, glory be, we're saved. Now, I don't know about you, you start seeing that kind of stuff happen all around you, earthquake going down, and 7,000, that's a lot of people dying right around you, and then to give glory to God because they know that they're the remnant. The Bible says, and you shall know. They knew they were saved. Why? Because they had Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They knew that now, amen. Uh, Revelations chapter number 16. Turn there with me. This will be the last scripture we read. Revelations chapter 16. Boy, I could do this all night. Wouldn't it be awesome? We're reading this and the Lord calls us home. That'd be great. Hey, we'd know what we get to look down at, but we won't be looking down. That, how in the world can you have joy and look down on the earth? You know, people that go to heaven aren't looking down on earth. They got somebody else to look at. I think God's a little more important. Revelation 16, verse number 18. They don't want to look down here and feel sorry, feel sad. In verse number 18, it says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. It means that we don't even, we probably couldn't even tell you how great it was. We have a, we have a uh, what's that scale called? The Richter scale. There isn't one for God's earthquakes. And there was a great earthquake, uh, such as not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now that's coming from the word of God. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the uh, nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And, isn't that scary? And every island fled away. And the mountains were not found. Now you say, what's going on? Every island fled away. Well, there was such a great earthquake that they disappeared into the water. You say, well, what happened to the mountains? Well, the earthquake was so great that they flattened. You ever taken dirt and shook it? Huh? Well, we can't shake as hard as God can. Let me tell you something. This is a great earthquake, but not for God. God's all powerful. He can do whatever he wants. But notice what's interesting is God gives a little shake and all the mountains, they disintegrate. He gives a little shake and all the islands disappear. Can't tell me it's not going to be a little, free, a little scary. It's going to be a time of telestial and celestial disturbance. We'll start back next Wednesday on number six. A time, and we'll go over this is interesting, of satanic, that is your blank, satanic delusion and deception we're going to go over that even though i gave you the blank we still need to sit on that one right now let me tell you something what's what's really curious to me is there's a lot of satanic stuff going on what do you think that's leading up for all kinds of satanic things amen and so there it's going to be a time of satanicness and uh, you know what's i uh, almost made me cry when i was reading this one because it talks about how they have opportunity and they deny and blaspheme god to his face. They see all the death. And they see all the things that are happening. And they deny. They deny Christ. And you say, man, I don't know how God could do that. God didn't do it. He's given them a chance. They deny God all the way till they die. They die. It would be like they were lashing him with their teeth. Not wanting to have anything to do with Jesus Christ. What a, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. We think that we have family members that are mean, right? 
What an awful time. I'm telling you, we're, we're at the precipice of all of this. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's close in a word of prayer. Where Jim, do you mind closing us tonight in a word of prayer?